Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I've been doing a series on TIG welding basics and so this video is on TIG welding settings. The settings for the TIG welders, all those knobs. You know, a long time ago I did a little series and I called it, what are all those freaking knobs? Well now we've got touch pads as well as knobs to deal with. And these are digital machines, full featured machines. I've got two machines side by side. Remember the welding cart I built several weeks ago? Well, I was able to fit two inverters side by side on this thing. And so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go over the features, the buttons, how they're laid out on each one, and then go over on the other one, how it's laid out differently. We'll weld a little bit with each one and correlate kind of like, okay, I understand what that setting does now. And I understand it can be laid out different on this other welder but I understand what it does, and if I see another welder that's laid out even different, I can probably figure it out. That's the goal here. The goal is to be able to kind of grab a hold of any welder and make something happen. Most of the time, I prefer to use a foot pedal. One particular example I can think of where a switch like this could come in handy is just laying up underneath a car or up underneath a, any, anything where it's hard to get to, and you, don't, you can't drag a foot pedal up in there. Okay, if, I set, if I'm using a torch switch like this, now I don't have a foot pedal, so I don't have any amperage control, right? Well, not quite. You got a little bit of amperage control. And one way you can do that is you can set the upslope and the downslope to about five seconds. So if you're, let's say for instance, if you're welding an exhaust under a car, and it's roughly a sixteenth of an inch thick, that's going to be pretty close. 50 to 63 thousandths of an inch thick. One, roughly uh, maybe 1.6 millimeters thick, not much thicker than that. So you know, you know you're not going to need any more amps than that. So let's say you're going to set your machine at 55 or 60 amps, maybe a little on the cold side because you know it's going to take you longer to do it and you're not going to be able to position and get in and get out like you can when you, with it on the bench. Okay, so I set my machine, let's say at 55 amps and I set 5 seconds upslope, 5 seconds downslope, 2T position. I'm all up under there, can't get my helmet down, I finally get my helmet knotted down, I hit the trigger, I hit the trigger and I've got five seconds now, five seconds to go from five amps where it starts up to 55 amps. So I've got five seconds now to position my filler wire and get in the right place. Then I start welding and I see, oh, it's getting a little hot. I let off, it's going to drop, it's going to drop like 10 amps a second. Okay, so in one second, it's going to drop 10 amps. That's probably going to be helpful to me. If it drops 10 amps and now it starts getting too cold, I can hit the trigger again, and it'll ramp it back up. And if it gets too hot, I can let it off again. So you can play the, you can play the upslope, downslope game to almost be like a foot pedal in a pinch. Also, anything, anything that's thick that doesn't require a lot of amperage control, you can use a trigger, a trigger switch on. And that's convenient sometimes especially if it's, it's a large part around the bench and you're getting tack welds and you're moving around, walking around, rather than dragging that foot pedal around. Even on a wireless pedal, you got to kick it around or pick it up and, and, and drag it around. So it has its place. For most jobs, I prefer a foot pedal. Okay, we're using two machines here today for this demonstration because these are laid out really differently. It's a Miller Dynasty 280DX on the left with the wireless foot control uh, receiving unit you see sticking out there. And then an Everlast PowerTig 255EXT on the right. Both of these pretty similar in their features. Now, again, wireless foot pedal, very expensive but nice nice to have and this is the little receiving unit that you have to have to do that also the feature of the dynasty 280 is a little sd card slot up here that you can receive updates of software and stuff like that from miller and i actually have to do an update so that i can get all the benefits out of this with amplitude settings on here i haven't gotten to there yet but i'll keep you posted on that as as i go Okay, I'm going to go from left to right here. That's kind of like how this, how the dynasty is laid out. You start over on the very far left-hand side, and you'll see that as I'm set on DC because I'm welding stainless steel, TIG high frequency, and then not remote standard, but remote 2T hold. That kicks me into the 2T settings where I set upslope and downslope. My initial amperage, 10 amps. Upslope set to 7 seconds. That's kind of long, but I'm doing it just to kind of exaggerate things so that you'll see on the demonstration on the turntable, you'll see the upslope and downslope very plainly. Downslope set at 7 seconds. 
called final slope on the Miller here, and then final amperage at 10 amps. So that'll taper down to a very low amperage uh, before it finally terminates the arc. All right, with the Miller, it's got what's called a 2T hold setting. So again, with a foot pedal, you're likely never to use it, but just to dem I'm just demonstrating it with a foot pedal as if this was just an on-off switch. So with the foot pedal, I press it, and it, it'll weld on 2T, and it'll upslope, and it'll reach 90 amps or whatever I have the current set at, and it won't quit welding until I let it off, and then it'll taper down and then quit. The 2T hold setting means if I press it and then let go of it right away within, within a couple of seconds, I can leave the foot pedal alone. It'll go ahead and ramp itself up, weld at the welding current. It won't stop until I tap it again. All I gotta do is tap it like that and it'll ramp down. So that's that's the difference on the Miller. The, uh, the Everlast has a 2T setting and a 4T setting separate toggled, and a lot of machines do. All right, let's, let's just show real quickly what this one does, difference between 2T and 2T hold. I'll turn the, turn the positioner on here, use the foot pedal to block the light. <laughs> I'm going to press it. It lights up. I'm just going to hold it. It's going to take seven seconds to ramp up. And then when I get finished, when I want to taper off or let go, it should take seven seconds to taper down to nothing and then terminate the arc. Boom. There it is. All right. Now, if I, do, if I use the 2T hold, I let go of it. It's going to go ahead and ramp up anyway. Ramp up to its operating current. And then when I'm finished, I tap it again, it takes seven seconds to taper off and quit. Simple as that. Okay, what you see here is a big piece of stainless steel, roughly three-eighths of an inch thick, uh, about three inches in diameter. I've got it in a turntable, and I'm going to use this to demonstrate upslope and downslope. So now it started, and I got seven seconds. It's going to taper up to 90 amps from 10 amps and then we'll let it weld a little while just so we can see the distinct difference and somewhere there right around there it started down sloping it takes seven seconds to slope down you hear the fan on demand kick on on the on the Miller Dynasty there and that's what the bead looks like now and it tapers off and looks something like that all right now we're going to we're going to run a bead with that Everlast machine and it's got a small air-cooled number nine torch here that came with it, along with a water-cooled torch. And uh, you can see the little switch there, zip tied to the handle. And that's what I'm going to be used to. That's what I'm going to be using to demonstrate the 2T and 4T positions. Okay, let's take a look at how you set upslope and downslope and all that stuff on this Everlast machine. You can see it is laid out completely different than the Dynasty, but a lot of machines do have the diagram on the front like this to kind of make sense of it all, make sense of uh, everything from pre-flow to post-flow and everything in between. Starting on the left, you got pre-flow. Next, you got start amps, then upslope, then welding amps, then downslope, and then the end amps and then post flow and that is the sequence that everything happens in and it's pictured on a little diagram to kind of help it make sense to you so you kind of always want to go from left to right in your mind here so let's toggle here by hitting the select button and the first thing it sends us to is the down slope there we'll, we'll set it up to seven seconds just like uh, the dynasty the same settings we're going to use end amps 10 amps post flow seven seconds pre flow 0.3 seconds start amps 10 upslope we'll go ahead and set it to seven seconds just like we did before and then the the operating amperage or the the uh, max amperage here we'll drop it down to 90 same as the dynasty and we'll do it uh, we'll do a little quick demo on that same piece of steel in the 2t setting here so that's two touches so I press it once and I gotta hold it and as long as I hold it against the torch it will weld and when I let off of it, that's when it'll kick the ups or the downslope in, I should say. That'll kick the downslope in and it'll taper down and then terminate the arc. So I let off of it there, seven seconds. It'll taper down to 10 amps before it finally terminates the arc. And it's no surprises there. Quick look at what that looks like up close and behind a, a welding lens. Initiated the arc, takes seven seconds to ramp up to, to the 90 amp max. And we're going to let it weld for a few seconds here. 
going over a little piece of trash here and there where I forgot to wipe this thing down and then tapers down to 10 amps and then quits and that's what it looks like it kind of a depiction of you tell seven seconds is long enough to see a upslope and the downslope very distinctly now, here's a little wonky little application that I, I did one time imagine this Imagine you you needed to weld a few hundred of these right here, and that's all it is. Is uh, after you finish welding these little fittings from the inside, you put it all together and weld these end caps on stainless steel, about the size of a Coke can, two inch diameter. But um, the last weld was just a fusion pass. That's all it was. All the requirement was just couldn't leak. Had to look good. So you can set this up in a little aluminum trough or a stainless trough and hand weld and roll and hand weld and roll. Or if you've got hundreds of them, and I've done hundreds of these, a turntable like this will come in really handy. Now, you can, you're going to hold the torch or you want to put the torch stationary. I had a torch stationary. I've got a torch holder. By setting a machine to the 2T setting and replacing, this, and replacing a switch like this with a timer switch, this actually has this this has a timer switch inside here, but I fried it, so I hooked got my own timer switch, and I I, I wired it in. Basically, it's just two wires. It's a switch. It's a timer that operates a little micro rocker switch. That's what it is. That's what it was that I used. And so by setting the machine on 2T, the the machine doesn't care if I got a timer switch on there or if I'm holding this thing manually. By setting it on 2T and the torch stationary. I could set that timer to where it made one complete revolution plus then overlapped a little bit and then tapered off with about a three or four second downslope and every every weld was the same. Now this is a weld that was done years ago. It's just a fusion weld, no filler metal. I'm going to run a bead over top of that with the power TIG using 33 pulses a second because that setting works really well when you're welding close to an edge and preventing the bead from wandering over. So it looks a little slower than 33 pulses a second mainly just because of the shutter speed of the camera but it works really well when you're welding near an edge. I'm going to tack up a simple lap joint and I've got the machine set to 111 amps, uh, 3 seconds upslope, 4 seconds downslope and uh, if I was just tacking a bunch of these, I'd probably put it on zero upslope and set the amperage higher, like one and a half to two times what I would weld with. And that would let me get really quick burst tacks, make it really quick, but I don't want to set the machine that many times. So let's, let's get some tacks on these and we'll weld them out using nothing but the trigger switch and upslope and downslope. Let's weld it. All right, this is 11 gauge cold rolled steel. And I got the upslope set on three seconds. So I've got three seconds to kind of get situated and get my rod in there. And, and that's not, that's, that's just fine for 11 gauge. If this was a lot thinner, I might give myself twice that much upslope just to make, make sure I have time, plenty of time on the corner to not melt the corner away and get rod in there and get moving. I'm set at 111 amps. I'm using a 1 16th uh, filler metal here. And pretty soon coming up on the end here where it's down slope. So I hit the trigger right about now and then come on back inboard and, and it takes four seconds to down slope and that wasn't too bad. Uh, Could have used a little longer up slope and down slope I guess but uh, on something this thick which is an eighth of an inch thick roughly three millimeters it's not that difficult just to use a torch switch. Now let me show you a couple of older clips here that I did using a previous version of the uh, of the Everlast machine here using nothing but a torch switch this thick bracket steel just using a lay wire and also did a little pulse manual pulse video on some thin wall tubing where I set the uh, using the 2T setting and the torch switch I set the upslope to zero and the downslope to two and a half seconds and that worked out really well for me to manually pulse using just the torch trigger and the benefit of the switch is you don't have to pulse it once a second if you get kind of hung up and then setting the downslope to two and a half seconds was just about right to let it cool off just a little bit but not enough to leave any kind of a crater or void or uh, pinhole crater crack or anything like that well 
it seems like I kind of went to great lengths today to demonstrate you know the applications for 2T and 4T and upslope and downslope using a torch switch instead of a foot pedal. Let me just state again I prefer a foot pedal most of the time. I also like to keep an open mind and experiment with things and so a few years ago I started messing with the torch switch on certain jobs in the shop, especially ones that were kind of hard to reach and I've had to walk around a table. I didn't want to drag the foot pedal around. And one benefit that I that I got out of it that I didn't anticipate was being able to guess what amperage a certain job would take. Because when you don't have a foot pedal, you got to be pretty close with the setting because you got what you got when you hit the trigger and it ramps up. Also, you know what, just explaining 2T and 4T with talk that's been done before. I try to give you some applications today on where it can come in handy. I'll try to go over all the settings that these machines have. You know, AC frequency, AC balance, uh, the Dynasty. I should be able to get that amplitude thing going there with the SD card upgrade. I've got a, I've got some work to do on that. And the Everlast has a feature called Advanced Pulse, where it actually pulses between AC and DC negative. So. That, that feature has got a lot of potential, and I'm going to dig in deep on that. So as always, appreciate your time, appreciate you watching. Make a comment, ask a question. We'll try to answer the questions before we get through with this series.